To be a part of the show, call 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Now, let's go live to Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick. Alongside Coach Flood and Eric LeGrand, here's the voice of the Scarlet Knights, Chris Carlin. Another fantastic crowd in attendance here at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick. Welcome, everybody, to week three of the Kyle Flood Show. Chris Carlin, Eric LeGrand, and the head coach of the Scarlet Knights as they prepare for their Big Ten opener on Saturday night against that team from Pennsylvania. He is Kyle Flood. Coach, how are you? Hi, it's exciting to be back every week, 1-0. It's a, it's a good pattern to go with right now. If you were to add them up, Rutgers is 2-0 at this point, mm -hmm. but it has gone exactly as you would have hoped in that regard. Be a part of the show, 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Tweet us your questions at our football. We're here on WCTC 1450 for the next hour and on scarletknights.com. Well, let's get into it. The win over Howard this past Saturday. Coach, Just what did you take out of the game? Well, there were certain things I was pleased with. Uh, I, you know, they, they got on us a little quickly. They were up 7 nothing, and then we were able to, uh, to put 31 points on the board and score 31 points by the half, uh, which is something we haven't done very often uh, here at Rutgers. So I, I was pleased with some of the execution in the first half on offense. I think our defense settled down uh, after that first drive uh, and did a good job of holding them just to seven points in the first half. Uh, I think we, when we're in that situation again, as a program, I would like to see us handle the second half a little bit better. But the positive of the second half was in the fourth quarter, we were able to get a lot of guys some playing time uh, and get them out there, some for the first time and some just to get a little bit more experience because ultimately a lot of those guys are going to be needed before the end of the season. And how much film study goes into looking at those guys when they got their playing time out there in the fourth quarter? Do you get to evaluate them a lot on Sunday, Monday, or does it play all week long? Do you get to look at them? No, we, we pretty much evaluate it on Sunday. We watch it with it on Sunday, then we put it to bed and, and get moving on the next game. You know, what some of those guys found out, though, is it, it's a little bit different on game day. Yeah. You know, you made, I said this earlier in the week, you know, you make a mistake in practice, the whistle blows, you do it again, or you move on. And in the game, sometimes you make a mistake, that scoreboard changes. So I think it was a good learning experience for some of those younger, lesser experienced players. Well, with that being the case, and you have some of those guys, does it give a coach uh, a little bit more of a comfort level when you're able to get those guys into a game and maybe increase your depth a little bit? Not increase it, but certainly improve it in terms of experience. It does, and it's one of the, it's, it's one of the advantages you gain in a game like that, even though maybe the score at the end of the game is, is not as, as pretty as you would like it to be. But I think long term, you're better served getting those younger players in the game and getting them experience because, like I said before, you're going to need them. We're going to need, we're going to need all these guys by the end of the year. Did one player particularly stick out to you? Here's the, here's the two guys that I, that I was pleased with. I was really pleased with our two freshman running backs, mm -hmm. having an opportunity to, to run the ball for the first time in live fire and, uh, and doing a pretty good job of securing the football. Uh, Robert Martin at one point, I think on first down, reached the ball out at the end of the run. So we, we got that one corrected in a hurry. <laughs> but those are the things that happen when you put a freshman in the game. And, and fortunately for us, we were able to do it last week and, and get through that. And I know that's a mistake that he won't make again. Josh Hicks had some burst as well. Uh, let's talk about some of your starters from the game. First of all, Gary Nova was, was pretty efficient. And I thought it was interesting, Coach. He had a throw early in the game that he probably wished he had back. It didn't result in a turnover or anything like that. But it looked like one of those instances where maybe – he was trying to take uh, or trying to make something happen. And then the rest of the way, it's almost as if he played flawless when he was in there. A little too aggressive on that throw. And we had a you know, situation where we really were just trying to get a few more yards to make the field goal a little bit closer. And, and he was a little bit too aggressive. And that's, again, a great learning experience for him. And one of the signs of a mature football player, he was able to take that play, learn from it, and apply it immediately in that game. Because you're right. For most of that game, he, he really made some great decisions, played very efficiently, if you use that word, and it's really the perfect word to use for the way he played. And, and sure enough, when you do that and you get the ball to guys who can make plays like Leonte Carew, like Paul James, next thing you know, you have four touchdown passes. Well, one person that really stuck out to me was John Simmons. And again, consistency. How important is that for him to be consistent now for the rest of the year, especially with the upcoming schedule? Yeah, I love the fact that you brought John up because he's a – a great example of an expression I try to use with the team. There's nothing more valuable in life than consistency, and that's John. You know exactly what you're going to get. He's an excellent route runner. He catches every ball that gets thrown to him, and sure enough, in the last two games, he's come up with a touchdown catch in each of them, and it doesn't surprise me because 
He's an extremely reliable, extremely consistent football player who, who's got a really nice skill set as well. Again, get on the telephone line at 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. We'll get to your questions on Twitter as well, at our football. And if you're here in attendance at Brother Jimmy's tonight, please come on down front. Make sure you ask the coach a question. We will get you right up immediately. Uh, defensively, uh, what did you look at uh, in terms of some of your starters out there? Who jumped out to you on the defensive side? I think it starts again uh, up front for us, guys like Darius Hamilton, uh, Kamoko Ture, continues to rush the passer uh, very well for us. One of, the, one of the differences, I think, about this defense so far is we've been able to get to the quarterback with our four-man rush. It hasn't always been about blitz, um, and that's something different that we can say this year that we really haven't been able to say since the days of guys like George Johnson and Jamal Western and, and Eric Foster, so, and Eric Legrand even, you know, although he's more of a first, second down guy, Eric Foster. <laughs> but... Uh, but it, I think that's important, and, and even more important now as you look forward to the next game, because a guy like Christian Hackenberg, if you have to have to pressure with five or six to get to him, you're giving a lot of you're giving him a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups all over the field, and he's pretty good at finding them. And what did you think about your defensive back? How did how they play this game? I think we need to be more consistent. I think that's an area that we can improve in, uh, and I think we will. I, I see that this week, but once you get into the season. It's really hard to judge that improvement on Tuesday and Wednesday. You're putting in a game plan, you're practicing, there's going to be some mistakes. You really can only judge it Saturday to Saturday. So mm -hmm. you know, I think we need to play better. I think the players understand that. Uh, they've had a good week of practice so far, so we expect them to be better on Saturday. Special teams, couple of block kicks. That's what Rutgers does, as Eric <laughs> said uh, on the call on the blocked uh, field goal. Uh, two more, as we said, 37 since 2009 to leave the country in that regard, pleased with the special teams? We take a lot of pride in it. Uh, we practice it a lot. We devote a lot of time to special teams in general, blocking kicks specifically. Uh, and it's something we're going to continue to do. It's a part of what we do. And when, when you block a punt in a game, your percentages of winning, mm -hmm. they go way up. And, and if you can block a field goal or an extra point and keep points off the board for the other team, uh, we'll do that all the time. And it really comes down to a mentality. Because you could be working at it all game, and if you block one, if you were to block one in a game, you would lead the country by far. Uh, and we certainly don't block one a game, but we blocked two in that game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm excited about the progress we're making on special teams. I saw Josh Hicks with a kickoff return, and I said that early in the year. You know, people who are going to try not to kick the ball to Janarian Grant are going to have to kick the ball to guys like Josh Hicks. And it's great to have two guys back there that can really do a good job. Can you talk about the role players on the pump block team? Because you know, you come up with design, you come up with someone who you think is going to get to the block point, but someone always comes scots free. It's not always the block point guy. So can you explain how you have to, I guess all the guys have to go 100% because you never know who's going to get turned loose. That's exactly right. Everybody on the team has to believe they're going to be the one who blocks it. And if everybody believes that, regardless of what happens, if we've got it schemed correctly, and I think we do, it's Coach Frazier, Coach Rossi before him, Coach Smith before him, they do a good job of scheming it. Somebody's going to come free. But if, if, but if the guy who comes free didn't think that he was going to be the guy and didn't come off the ball the way he should, he's going to be a step late. And a step late, you might as well be five steps late because it, it's not going to be a block. We have our first question of the night here in person right. at Brother Up Jimmy's quick here in downtown New Brunswick. Member of the Riot Squad is always, here. Always pumped up to see the Riot Squad. We heard they were going to be here. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Matt Salvatore. I'm from Sayreville, New Jersey. Sayreville, New okay. Jersey. Home of Coach Najar. Absolutely. Formerly the high school coach at Lincoln High School in Brooklyn before he took over Sayreville. I mentioned that for Coach Donardo, who's from Brooklyn. Jerry Donardo in attendance tonight from the Big Ten <laughs> Network. <laughs> Brother Jimmy's. Uh, my question is, Nadir, no, Nadir Barnwell had two huge plays on special teams. Now, does that influence your decision on whether or not he moves up in the defensive depth chart at all? No. No? But I like your question, though. <laughs> uh, we expect them all to make great plays on special teams. But in regard to a, a player's position, they have, to, they have to, to make their progress at that position to move up the depth chart. Absolutely. But Nadir's a talented football player, a local guy at Piscataway High School, a place we've had a lot of players from. Absolutely. And, uh, and somebody that's going to be a big part of what we do this year. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Nadir, of course, one of the cornerbacks on this team, and you moved one of your cornerbacks back to running back. Justin Goodwin was there for a few weeks, did a nice job for you, was a little banged up, did not play last week. Coach, what went into the decision to move Justin back to the offensive side for this week's game against that team out west? Well, you know, Justin was, was questionable 
going into the week. And, and we didn't really know if he was going to be available to us. And then when we got to Monday, Tuesday morning, it started to look like he might be available, but we were still weren't sure. And I just felt for this week, if with limited practice time, if he was going to be able to help us, it would be a lot easier for him to help us on offense. He's because got lot, he's comfortable with it? Exactly. He's got a lot more to recall, a lot more to fall back on in terms of offensive scheme and, and being an offensive player. So I don't know that the move is permanent. It may be, it may not be. Uh, but for this week, I think he can help us be 1-0 on offense, and so that's where we put him. For someone like Goodwin, would it have to take extra time and meetings for him to get adjusted back to the offensive side and the game plan for this week? Because I remember when I got transferred over from defense to offense, I was spending extra time learning how to, what I had to do for this position or this, or this set. So would it be the same with Goodwin, or as you said, it comes to him naturally? Having missed time, I think it would have been harder for him to go back on defense. You know, he played offense. And even though the systems aren't identical, they're similar. So, and he went through training camp, a fair amount of training camp with us in the early part of the installs on offense. So he's got a great foundation on offense. So it did take a little bit of extra time, but I think it would have taken more had we put him on defense. And that really was part of how we made the decision. Let's take our first phone call tonight. Jeff is in Hackettstown, and he is on the Kyle Flood Show. Jeff, how are you doing tonight? Doing well, Chris. How are you? Great. What's going on? What's your question for Coach? Um, i got a couple questions, at least one, if I can... Get to it. Um, number one, if there's any game we're going to be 1-0 and for, Coach, this is the game. <laughs> I've been to all the Penn State games that Rutgers has played since, 19, since the early 70s, and uh, it's a heck of a rivalry, and it's good to see it being resumed. So you've had this one uh, circled for a while. Oh, yeah. I was at the <laughs> one in um, Meadowlands uh, when Mike McQuarrie, uh, the infamous Mike McQuarrie, threw the uh, – Instead of taking a knee through the pass to the end zone, which caused Coach Graber uh, great consternation. <laughs> Coach Graber well will be in attendance that. this week, That's by right. the way. I'm very well aware of that. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to see him, but it'll be good that he is there. I do have a question. If you though. see him, don't um, bring up that game. <laughs> <laughs> give him a little agita, I'm sure. Nice guy. Played golf at Harkis Hollow. Good golfer, too. Um, my question is um, a little bit, we don't know, or maybe they haven't announced the uniform yet for upcoming game. Last week, I was sitting in my regular seat on the 40, right behind the Rutgers bench. I've uh, been there since 1977, and right before I fainted from the heat, I again noticed how difficult it is to read the numbers on the red uniform. Was that done by design by Coach uh, uh, Shiano and his staff, or is it just my old age eyes? You know, I, I would never... I would never uh, want to assume that we would be bad sports and and not have the the numbers be readable for the other coaches in the, uh, in, the in the visiting box as they're trying to make their their personnel substitutions. I think you know it, it looks to me like that's just the way Nike made them, and I guess it's unfortunate for the other team that they can't see them. What, what about the uh, radio broadcasters? <laughs> I know Chris up with the binoculars, Chris. <laughs> no, it, it was not. It was not done. Uh, it was not done intentionally. Uh, but it. Uh, but it is not something, um, you know, if, if it does create a disadvantage for the other teams that are trying to read the numbers, you know, we're in compliance with the NCAA regulations. They came out this year with a little bit more specific uh, regulatory stance on what uniforms could be and how the numbers had to be designed, and, and we're well within the rules uh, for that. Uh, I know the, uh, the uniforms we wear now, uh, I love them, and the reason I love them is because the recruits love them. Yep. And I think you reveal what colors you'll be wearing this Saturday night. I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. And, uh, <laughs> so you're gonna, have, arm, you're gonna coach. have to you're gonna have to get in your get in your seat early and, and watch us come out for warm ups, and you'll have a pretty good idea. Coach, I'm there already. I don't see too many other people yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> they're, Thanks, all at, Jeff. they're all at Brother Jimmy's. Good luck. Thank you. Well, we appreciate the phone call, Jeff, and, you know, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of people uh, love to talk about the uniforms, but they are something that are, are widely, widely uh, appreciated by the players and by the recruits. You certainly see that, but, you know, the players love the uniforms. I mean, they are, up close, they are beautiful-looking uniforms, the Nike Pro Combat uniforms. And you really have to give Nike a lot of credit because they, they took over a year in their design process. They come to campus with an entire team. Uh, they put together, they, they, go over, they go all over campus, they study the history of the school, and they come up with the ideas that ultimately become the uniforms, and, and we couldn't be happy. Can you, do, can you see in the near future a little bit more designs, a little bit extra combinations to them? 
I like the designs we have right now. I do have one other that I've requested. I, I won't. I won't say it on air. I don't want to put too much pressure on them up out there in Oregon. But uh, but I do have one other that I have requested uh, that they make for us, and we're waiting to see the original designs on. Okay. Mm, all right. Stay tuned and. Stay tuned for us. We're going to step aside for the first time tonight. 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Tweet us your questions at our football. If you're here at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick and you have a question, by all means, come on up front and ask the coach. We're here until 8.30, and we have an awful lot to discuss as Rutgers prepares for their Big Ten opener against Penn State this coming Saturday night. We'll step aside. Back in a moment. This is the Kyle Flood Show. The chalkboard. Sweeps, screens, every play is drawn up and studied. When you can visualize a play, you can execute a play. The same is true in business. The more visibility you have in your supply chain, the better your business performs. That's why UPS lets you track what comes in and what goes out. Logistics is our game. See how we can help yours at thenewlogistics.com. UPS, official logistics partner of the NCAA. AT&T's best ever pricing for individuals and families lets you stay connected with the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. It's easy. Just find the service plan that fits you best, including options up to 10 lines, so you can text, call, and download pretty much everywhere you go. AT&T, mobilizing your world. AT&T is a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics. Reliability claim based on nationwide carriers 4G LTE, 4G LTE not available everywhere. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Looking for a place to watch all of the Rutgers football action as they head into the Big Ten? Enjoy the games with fellow Scarlet Knights fans at these Rutgers Athletics official watch party locations. New York City's Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, Hoboken's Cadillac Cantina, Tom's River's McIntyre's Pub, New Brunswick's Mike's Courtside Sports Bar and Grill, and Quaker Steak and Lube's three locations in Edison, Brick, and Pohatcon. What's up, Rutgers? Y'all ready for some football? Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick is your headquarters for Scarlet Night Football, as well as your home for the Jets, Giants, and all your favorite NFL teams. With over 30 HGTVs, we serve up all the NFL action on Sunday and Monday nights with amazing food and drink specials all game long. So come on down to Brother Jimmy's and put some south in your mouth. For reservations and event information, visit us at brotherjimmy's.com. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, located at 5 Eastern Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey. See y'all soon. at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick for this week's edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Rutgers with their Big Ten opener this Saturday night, and they host Penn State on the Big Ten Network, 8-12 kick time. Coach, uh, just in terms of finally getting here, finally getting to the opening game of conference play, it's been, what, almost two years now at this point that uh, you've been waiting to get this opportunity. Just uh, now that it is finally here, what are your thoughts about this chance? It's an exciting time for us. It's an exciting time for the university. It, it'll be a historic evening. I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to minimize that in any yeah. way. It's a, it, it's a historic event in the history of our football program and our university to play our first Big Ten football game. Uh, to be able to do it against our neighbors to the west, I think, makes it even more special uh, for the fans that surround the game. You know, both uh, both fan bases, I think, will be really excited about the game, and every year excited about that game going forward. For us as a program, though, and a football team, this is an opportunity to be 1-0. And it's an opportunity to be 1-0 in conference play. And that's the most important thing. So my message to the team is, yes, this is exciting and there's going to be a lot of excitement on campus. I want you to embrace that. I think that's a good thing. But allow that excitement to fuel your process. Mm. Don't allow the excitement to distract you from your process. And if the excitement fuels your process, it's only going to, it's only going to allow you to perform better on Saturday. And how's it been for the players and also you, Coach, with the media frenzy? And we got the Big Ted Network on campus. What's it been like? Uh, you know, this is, the, this is the media capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think when there's one thing about this media market you know is that when, when you are performing well, when you're playing well, when there's an event, they're going to cover it. And, and we embrace that. I mean, it's one of the things that makes us unique in terms of our football program and our university. We are the Big Ten University. We are the Big Ten football program in the largest media market in the world. 
and I think that's a positive for us and something that we want to embrace every chance we get. Let's get to another question here in person. Another member of the Riot Squad is here, Coach. Hi, Coach Flood. How you doing? Good. My name is Cassie. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. All right. Um, my question is, what is your favorite Rutgers tradition? My favorite Rutgers tradition. Good question. Thank you. I think I think that's that's a that's a layup right there. My favorite Rutgers tradition is singing the alma mater after we win with the student section. <laughs> that's my favorite. I usually get some of my children down there. Sometimes my son Kyle comes down. Sometimes my daughter Isabella. Sometimes my 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 little maniac two-year-old Joseph gets down there and runs around the field. So no, that, that's that's definitely my favorite tradition. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Scarlet Walk's right up there. Yeah. Scarlet Walk is right up there. Oh yeah. And this. But I don't. I don't. I don't get to enjoy that one as much because sure. we're still before the game and focus on. But it's a great tradition and, and something I think for the players is really special. And I mention it because the Big Ten Network is going to be live from just outside the Scarlet Walk. Uh, they're going to be there early for our riot squad and for students. Uh, 11 a.m. I believe on Saturday they'll be live then, and then later on in the afternoon as well. And you know, having that kind of setup there. There's going to be an awful lot of excitement around that. And I remember what it was like for the Louisville game in 2006. It was not easy to get around that parking lot and, and to get around that area. Well, that Scarlet Walk has tremendous energy. And I think it's something that, that the, uh, the fans and the people that come to the game, they're, they're going to get used to it. It's not going to be, I really believe it's not going to be the last time BTN brings their set to our campus. And it's going to be a great opportunity for our fans to come out and show exactly how excited they are about Rutgers football to the entire nation. And as we're talking about traditions, what are some of your game day traditions when you have an 8 o'clock game, and how do you keep yourself ready? And either take a, do you take a nap or do you work out? What, what's some of your traditions? I am not a superstitious person. Uh, I'll leave that to the baseball coaches. <laughs> uh, but I do, I do run on game day. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just a, a habit more than a, than a superstition of any kind. And we've got a routine. We've got a routine that we go through for a 12 noon game. We've got a routine that we go through for a 3.30 game, and then we got one for a night game. And what we do in training camp is we take one of the Saturday scrimmages or one of the scrimmages, and we do them at 12 noon, and we do the exact game day procedure. Then we take one of the other scrimmages, we do it at night. This year we did it at 7 p.m. because we opened the season with a 7 p.m. local yeah. kickoff, and we do that at night. And this week it's 8, 12, so we just back it up just a little bit. But other than that, the routine will be the same. The players have done it. I think players are always more comfortable when they're in their routine, so I think it's important that we provide it for them. Let's get some of your questions on Twitter. We've got a few already to get to, Coach. You can also call in at 855-FLOOD44, or if you want to tweet your question, send them to at our football. Uh, first one, Coach, tonight uh, is in regard to somebody you mentioned a few moments ago, Komoko Ture. This is from Jeremy on Twitter. Ture seems to be a real find. I see a lot of parallels to Jason Pierre-Paul. His upside seems huge. Your thoughts? Well, I had the coach against JPP. He's a good player. Mm. You know, Jason Pierre-Paul, George Selvey with the defensive ends back at, in South Florida a couple of years back, and our tackles were Anthony Davis and Kevin Haslam. So we, we had some, some pretty good uh, back and forth in those games. Uh, I, I think, if I remember correctly, JPP was a junior college kid mm -hmm. who went to South Florida, played one year, I believe went to the NFL. Yep. So I, I think, you know, for him, we only got to see him one time. He was pretty raw. Uh, I don't get to watch a lot of NFL Phil, uh, games, but it, it looks like he's having a pretty good career. So obviously he's continued to get better as he's made that move to the next level. Uh, Komoko now has been with us two years. He redshirted and, and he's really coming on. And somebody that we thought when we recruited him had a different skill set than what we had on the team. It was the reason we, we were so excited about getting him in that recruiting class, even though he wasn't that well known. Very explosive, very long, excellent change of direction, good bender. All the things you look for in, in, a, in an effective pass rusher Coach Panagos has done a phenomenal job with him over the last year and a half to two years to get him to the point now where he's starting to affect games. And I still believe that he will continue to get better as he goes through his career. He's still, he's still very raw, uh, but he's getting a little bit better each week. So I think the comparisons, um, I don't know that I saw enough of JPP in college to make that comparison, but I would say they're both, both pretty good pass rushers. I, yeah, I think you probably meant physically, too. They're both very long. Yeah, yeah. and someone like Komoko would – does he have someone who's a role model on the team, or is he in this whole different category with the type of player he is? I would tell you Coach Panagos needs to be his role model. Yeah. <laughs> if Coach Panagos is his role model, he'll be doing just fine. <laughs> Coach, just a little bit more on his story, though, because for those who don't know, you said he's raw. It's raw. He's raw because he hasn't been playing the game all that long. No, and if I remember correctly, he played freshman football, played a little bit. I don't even know that he finished the season. 
then was really playing basketball at Barringer High School in Newark. And then his senior year, the coaches convinced him to come back out for football. Uh, coach Rossi had an excellent uh, relationship with Darnell Mangum, who was the head coach at, 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 uh, at uh, Barringer, is now an assistant over at Weequake. Coach Rossi had an excellent relationship with him and, and was working to coach it at uh, Barringer, was working with him over the summer and said, hey, Joe, I've got a guy. Who, this guy's got a chance. So he brought him to camp, and he came to camp for a day, and this is absolutely the truth. I went down to the D-line field in camp. I watched him for 10 minutes. I said, get him to my office. We offered him, and he committed shortly after that. Wow, that's, that's impressive. It did not take long to see how explosive he was, and we didn't have anybody on our roster like him. So I knew he could have a chance to be a good player. And when it comes to recruiting guys like that, do you, how do you some, find someone who just sticks out like that, you know, who hasn't been playing football so long? Do you, when they, if you don't get them to camp, how do you get them to, you know, to see them on film to offer them a scholarship? To me, that is, that is one of the advantages that we have as a football program is because there are so many quality football players in this population in New Jersey and in the state of Rutgers surrounding New Jersey, if we build the right relationships like Coach Rossi did in that particular case, when you have really, really strong relationships, you get really good information. And when you get really good information, you can minimize the mistakes in recruiting. It, it's so funny we're talking about this. Uh, it, it's, it's twofold in, in this regard. First of all, uh, I'm thrilled to announce that this week we're having a new member join our broadcast team, and that is former Scarlet Knight and one of the great defensive linemen that's ever played here, Jamal Westerman. No is going to be on our pregame, halftime, and postgame with Mark Belusis. And, and Jamal was at practice today, and we were chatting. And um, I, was, I happened to be in the office, it was uh, probably 11 years ago now, 10 years ago now, when Coach Ciano got the tape from Coach Joe Susan at the time of Jamal Westerman. And he was playing up in Canada in Brampton, Ontario, and not a ton of colleges are going up there to recruit saw the tape, they talked about it, and another one of those stories where here's a guy that maybe flew a little bit under the radar, but when you see what he can do, just jumps off the page, and they ended up offering him shortly thereafter. No doubt, Jamal, was a, he was a, a great player for us. I remember as the line coach having to try to block him in practice, very difficult to do, um, and really one of the gentlemen, the true gentleman uh, it, uh, that's come through our program, and Jamal is, is always fun to be around. I said to him today, I said, I hope this is a one-week stint for you on the radio. <laughs> and, uh, and that we all kind of do. <laughs> and that you're back in the NFL next week because he's such a quality person. Uh, he's excellent defensive lineman, plays on special teams. He's the type of guy that generally is in that league for a long time. So I think it's just a matter of time before he gets with the right team and gets back in that league. And I can say he taught me a lot because when I got moved to DN week two and Gary Watts tore his ACL in the bubble, I'll never <laughs> forget it. Moved me over to DN to back up Jamal. And I learned a lot from him. He taught me a lot, and I was always his roommate. Too, so I got to give credit to Jamal. And you're Welcome right. Back. Yeah, and you're right. You know, you talk about some of those young guys who played last week. You know, though, that's how quick it can happen. You know, one yeah. guy goes down, and all of a sudden, a guy that you think is going to redshirt or is not going to play much, all of a sudden, he's in the two deep and he's playing. Mm -hmm. Well, if you remember Jamal's senior year, he got hurt at the end of the year and uh, ended up missing the, the Papa John's Bowl, but he made that trip. And I joke you with you about this all the time. Because at that last practice, there's a tradition of the captains giving out special awards to players. West. And there was a freshman named Eric Legrand on that team. And Jamal uh, gave him the award for most likely to be checking his Facebook status. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, see, that's funny, too. Jamal was always, always getting on me, too, when we were being in the room, he's in the hotel. Or sitting in the D-line room, just sitting there looking back at me. Always ready to say something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll step aside. We're going to talk about the matchup with Penn State coming up. We've got more of your questions on Twitter, more of your questions here in person at Brother Jimmy's. If you've got them, come on up front by all means. And also on the telephone lines at 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Stay with us. This is the Kyle Flood Show. We're about living in the moment. You know, that moment when you open a Pepsi and hear the music. We're the doers, the shakers, the tastemakers. The ones who dance to their own beat. The ones who stay cool when things heat up. Whether the party is big or small. We're the ones who never want it to end. 
the ones who can't stop. And never will. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi. Live for now. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Looking for the best trained in the electrical business? Look no further. Our members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 456, go through a five-year nationally recognized apprenticeship program along with OSHA safety certifications, producing the best trained and most up-to-date electricians in the area. Fiber optics, high voltage, lighting retrofits, solar energy, healthcare facilities, school construction, data centers. We do it all. We are also proud to be one of the first building trades locals to be recognized with a drug-free workplace program. We at Local Union 456 are like Coach Flood and the Scarlet Knights, trained and proven to get the job done. Rutgers University Center for Management Development is an international leader in delivering innovative educational solutions to strengthen the business skills of our clients. We have a focus on today's professional with contemporary programs to meet the demands of an ever-changing business environment. Find your program today by visiting our website, cmd.rutgers.edu, and upon registering, use the special 10% discount code RURADIO or call us directly at 732-640-1853. We are live at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick, week three of the Kyle Flood Show. Chris Carlin, Eric Legrand, and the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Kyle Flood. We will discuss the matchup coming up this weekend, the Big Ten opener at High Point Solution Stadium with Penn State. But we have another question here in person, and it is from our old friend Scott. Our main from the he is. How are we doing, guys? All right, Scott. Scott. I was getting nervous you weren't here. Oh, I was, I'm right over there. I you thought there was a chance this. you were in class. And not I don't a think chance. We, I don't right. think we have to no worry. No classes about. Wednesday night to 730. That's not <laughs> happening. <you know? laughs> so my question is about um, our running game. Uh, no doubt one of the most fun things to watch the two games has been the two-headed monster of uh, Paul James and Desmond Peoples. Uh, it allows you to do more with them individually. We've seen a lot more of a PJ in the passing game. Does that give you an advantage going into our matchup with the neighbors out west, who I think have only allowed 93 yards on the ground through two games? Yeah, they do a great job. They, they do a really good job stopping the run right now. I think their their opponents right now are averaging 1.7 yards a rush, and uh, so they're they're as good as anybody in the country at stopping the run. And I, I believe I've believed all along that that running back room in in the Hale Center is one of the more talented rooms on our football team. And as I talked to Coach Friedgen, Early on, it was uh, it was one of the things we talked about. How are we going to use those guys? Because those guys are talented football players. as Paul James, uh, Desmond Peoples, Justin Goodwin at that point, and now does Justin Goodwin again? You know, added to that mix, and and I think certainly a good place to start when you're trying to run the football is to have a talented guy that you're handing the ball to. But I think it's also important that those guys are complete players, and that's what you've seen over the first two games. So the first game where Paul uh, carried the ball quite a bit and had a great a great day versus Washington State. And then the second game where he catches a couple balls out of the backfield uh, for a touchdown and, and, and I think 100 yards receiving on two carries. So ultimately, we want to be really smart on offense and we want to take what the defense has given us. But in every game, there comes a point where you have to run the ball and they know you have to run the ball. And that's where we're fortunate to be able to hand the ball to guys like P.J. and, and Desmond. All right, great. Thank you, guys. We'll see you out there on Saturday. Front row center, you know where I'll be. Be one and know. You got it. Early in the seats, Scott. Early in the seats. And that's one thing you certainly want to get across to the fans is the role that they can play in a game like this. Uh, The crowd will have an effect on this game. I've seen it before in our stadium. Uh, It it will be a a frenzied crowd by the time we kick it off at at 8 p.m. And I know that they want to be involved and they will be involved. and, And the crowd will impose their will on this game as we go through it. And then going back to what Scott brought up about Penn State's rushing defense, I remember a guy named Anthony Davis. Every time he knew he had a challenge or somebody that he was going to go against, something special, he stepped his game up to another level. Do you see anybody on that offensive line that reminds you of that, or is it a, just a total package that comes together with motivated like that? I, I know exactly what you mean mm-hmm. about Anthony. He loved, he loved mm-hmm. playing in these kind of games. He loved mm-hmm. playing against the high-profile defensive ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he got, you know, We talked about a guy like George Selvey or JPP. He loved it. He embraced it. That's what he wanted. And I feel like this group of offensive linemen 
has embraced this challenge. I've watched the way they've practiced. I've watched the way they've gone about their work this week. I've been really pleased uh, with how they've gone about their business. So I know they've embraced the challenge, but it's going to be a challenge. You know, the, the, this defense we're going to face is a very good defense. And, and not only are they very good defense, they're really good up front. Coach, uh, we should mention one of your players of the week in attendance, and that is Garif Glashen right mm. over here with Coach DiNardo. And, you know, here's a young man that's, that's been in your program uh, for a while. Tell us about Garif and, and the game he had the other day. Yeah, Garif's been in our program, I think, for nine years now. <laughs> uh, you know, no, Garif. He Garif's, was here when I was here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Garif's a, Garif's a fifth-year senior for us. He's played a lot of football for us, helped us win a lot of games on defense, was our – Player of the Week last week. Our Defensive Player of the Week, uh, our Offensive Player of the Week was Gary Nova, and our Special Teams Player of the Week was Davon Jacobs. The other two guys, I don't think – they might be able to stop in uh, after class, but they uh, – uh, uh, we have – I believe Mr. – is Mr. Jacobs here? Davon. There he is. Stop hiding behind the camera. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> – uh, <laughs> Davon Jacobs, our Special Teams Player of the Week. I didn't see you, Davon. I apologize. Um, but, uh, but Garif is, like I said, a guy who's played a lot of football for us, helped us win a lot of games, and really in his senior year now is playing his best football. And – Greg used to say this. I totally agree. One of the keys to every season is, are your seniors playing their best football? Because when they do, it gives you a chance. And, and wouldn't you know it, right on cue, our quarterback, Gary Nova, yeah. Offensive Player of the Week from last week. Good to see you, Gary. Nice job on the interview on BTN today. I saw that. So the fellas uh, get a chance to come down here and enjoy a little dinner. Um, so let's get a couple of more questions here in on Twitter. This one is from Ed Gladney on Twitter. Coach, with a large contingent, uh, contingent of recruits scheduled for attendance, how important is this game in garnering commitments? Every, every home game is an opportunity to showcase your program, to showcase your football team. Uh, we have a lot of recruits at every game. Uh, we're going to have quite a few at this game. Uh, I think every opportunity you get is important. I would never want a recruit to make a decision based on one day because, to me, where you're deciding on, on going to college, where you're deciding on playing in the program, it's, it's more than just one day. It's the experience you have as a player. It's the experience you have socially. It's the experience you have as a student. It's the alumni base ultimately that's going to work for you, the 300,000 living alums between New York City and Philadelphia that are going to work for you. So to me, is it, is it important? Every opportunity is important. But is, it, is, it, is this one day, should that be the, the ultimate reason? I don't know that that's the case. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask a young person to make a decision based on just one day. As a head coach, do you want to get recruits out more to earlier games or do you try to get them out a lot more out to those night games to get that electric atmosphere? You know, night games are always a different feel than a 12 o'clock game. Yeah, night games, are, are there's, there's no doubt it's a special atmosphere in that stadium at night. We really want to get them when we can get them because they're playing their season. So they're playing sometimes Friday night, sometimes Saturday afternoon, every once in a while Saturday night, not as much. That's why I think there's more at this game. When you play a Saturday night game, most of the high school players are available to come to that. But really, we, we want to get them there as much as we can get them there. Another question from our guy John Newman on Twitter. And John, uh, big involved with our vision. Thanks to him, we are uh, on here tonight. And on Twitter recently raised nearly $33,000 to help support our vision on scarletknights.com. John did a fantastic job with that. Good job, John. Huge Rutgers fan. And, Coach, his question is this. With Peel and Patton out so far, how would you grade the wide receivers who have stepped up behind them? I, I feel like uh, Andrew Terzilli made some progress last week. Yeah. You know, we were able to get it out. For the first game, he really hadn't been 100% going into the game, so his role maybe was a little bit smaller. Uh, he was healthier last week. I, I thought he performed well. I was excited about what he did in the game. Uh, certainly... Um, John Simmons has filled that void maybe more so than, than anybody. So, you know, I think the receivers that are coming up behind him, they're, they're doing a good job. They're getting better. And they're catching the ball when it's thrown to them because ultimately that's what good offense is. And one of the best things Gary do has done this, this season is spread the ball around the way he has. And now when it comes, I want to go to the tight ends now with uh, Tyler Croft. We know he can catch the ball. How have you seen this progressing in the running game and blocking? Well, I think, he, I think he's much better this year than he was last year. He's a, he's a better on-the-line tight end than, he, than he's ever been, and that's just a, another year of getting coached by Coach Campanile. It's another year in the weight room with Coach Cole and the other strength coaches. And he really hasn't had the ball come his way a lot, but that's okay because there are reasons for that. And at some point in the season, as Leonte, as John Simmons, as Andrew Terzilli, et cetera, continue to make plays, 
he's going to get the one-on-one -on -one coverage that's going to allow the ball to come his way. And when his opportunity comes, he just needs to be ready and catch it the way he always has. We'll step aside. We've got more of your questions coming up on the Kyle Flood Show right here on ScarletKnights.com and on 1450 WCTC. Hey, football fans, does your car insurance company care enough about you to pay for your ride home if you feel unsafe driving? Well, you can look for Plymouth Rock Assurance at an upcoming Rutgers football game and ask about our Get Home Safe program included with all policies. Certain limitations apply. We are live at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick. More coming up. A lot to discuss. Rutgers and Penn State Saturday night. This is the Kyle Flood Show. AT&T's best ever pricing for individuals and families lets you stay connected with the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. It's easy. Just find the service plan that fits you best, including options up to 10 lines, so you can text, call, and download pretty much everywhere you go. AT&T, mobilizing your world. AT&T is a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics. Reliability claim based on nationwide carriers 4G LTE, 4G LTE not available everywhere. Looking for a place to watch all of the Rutgers football action as they head into the Big Ten? Enjoy the games with fellow Scarlet Knights fans at these Rutgers Athletics official watch party locations. New York City's Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, Hoboken's Cadillac Cantina, Tom's River's McIntyre's Pub, New Brunswick's Mike's Courtside Sports Bar and Grill, and Quaker Steak and Lube's three locations in Edison, Brick, and Pohatcon. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. The chalkboard. Sweeps, screens, every play is drawn up and studied. When you can visualize a play, you can execute a play. The same is true in business. The more visibility you have in your supply chain, the better your business performs. That's why UPS lets you track what comes in and what goes out. Logistics is our game. See how we can help yours at thenewlogistics.com. UPS, official logistics partner of the NCAA. Rutgers football fans, it's time to join the 1,200 plus members of the Rutgers Touchdown Club in supporting Rutgers football 365 days a year. To become a member, please visit us at RutgersTVClub.com. Your membership includes regular meetings with Rutgers football coaches, discounts from local vendors, bus trips and giveaways, and a whole lot more. It's time for you to show your Rutgers spirit by joining the Touchdown Club today. Also, please support the team by purchasing 50-50 chances prior to each home game in the stadium parking lots. Visit us at RutgersTVClub.com for more information. Go Rutgers! Live at Brother Jimmy's downtown New Brunswick, it is the Kyle Flood Show. Chris Carlin, Eric Legrand, and the head coach, Kyle Flood. I, I, I asked you this for SNY the other day, but I'm going to ask it again. Uh, Penn State is coming in, but you have chosen not to refer to them as Penn State. Your thoughts? I, I, I think there's a lot of a lot of ways and, and expressions you could use to describe uh, that institution, and there are some that I use, and mm -hmm. there are some that I don't use, and it's not out of disrespect for them because I have a, a, sure. trem a tremendous amount of respect for the school, the program, the history, the tradition. Uh, there's no doubt, but. I know this, when, when the team from Pennsylvania comes to High Point Solutions Stadium this week, it's going to be an awesome atmosphere for college football, mm. as good as any atmosphere in the country. And I can't wait to be there, and I can't wait for them to have an opportunity to experience it with me. And when it comes to, you know, that type of experience, that game day experience, do you ever wish you had the chance to tailgate? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this the other day. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not so sure. I, I um I kind of like, I kind of like where of I'm. Of course, saying. of course. I'm just saying, <laughs> as a fan, coach, would you love to tell me? As a, I don't know that I, I, I think I might rather be in my living room at home. Oh, okay. I don't know, but listen, uh, all I can tell you is you don't walk through the parking lot and smell that. I mean, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. And Eric and I were talking the other day about how the fact we haven't tailgated at all. It's not going to work. Well, I think you guys maybe get it set up a couple hours before the game. <laughs> I got the RU. I'm Jitney sure there'd truck. be a lot of people the who love Jitney that. Jitney truck is Legrand. right by me. The they got flat screen TVs and everything. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a pretty good, over there. there are some pretty good setups, and it should be a wild scene and early this coming uh, Saturday. All, that, you know, that part is interesting to me because you know, in the past with the night games, at some point we come over and we, and we uh, 
and we do a little walkthrough. And I'm always amazed at how early some of these tailgates begin. Oh, yeah. And maybe it's just my lack of experience as a tailgater, not realizing that this is the norm. But I'll tell you what now, I've seen them in there as early as 10 a.m. I believe, oh, yeah. And they're going. Maybe it's earlier than that. I believe there's one crew that parks in the Scarlet Lot. That's a 2 a.m. crew. They stay there all night until the next day. 2 a.m. The, the night before. Yes, the night before. There is some great ones. stamina. You mentioned, yeah. yeah I need no a nap or two in there. <laughs> and you mentioned the Rutgers. Jitney, they're there. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, former uh, golf coach on the women's side, more about sure. oh, yeah. They always have a terrific tailgate set up. The blue lot, too, I heard. They go, oh. Gets a little fun over there, Chris. Yeah, maybe we'll take a little spin around. Hey, I need to try it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get into the game itself this week. Um, everybody knows about Christian Hackenberg, uh, terrific quarterback for Penn State. Coach, what? is most impressive about him? It's, it's, uh, it's hard just to mention one thing. He's got the prototypical NFL quarterback size. He can make all the throws. He's athletic enough to move around in the pocket, buy himself time, make a few yards uh, sometimes. He, they don't want him to be a runner. He doesn't necessarily want to run, but, but he, he, he will pull it down if you, if you present the opportunity for him to do it. I think he's a complete player. I think it's a great challenge for our defense. What are some of the other weapons you see from that Penn State offense that really stick out to you besides Hackenberg? You know, they got a, they've got a running back number one, a uh, very, very talented football player, a guy that we're familiar with. And they've got really a, an assortment of receivers that they're playing that all seem to catch the ball well, uh, do a nice job running after the catch. Their tight ends are tall and long. They look like Tyler. You know, that's what their tight ends look like. Uh, and up front, they're getting better. You know, they were young up front, and, uh, and they looked young in the first game. And then you saw a lot of improvement from game one to game two. And I think that is a, a testament to them and what they're doing well right now. But, you know, up front, they, they've got a lesser experienced group, but they're getting better, and they're getting better in a hurry. So, you know, I think it's one of the key matchups. When you try to defend a quarterback like this, if you can make them one-dimensional, it gives you a better chance to defend them. So and for us to do that, we're going to have to stop them from running the ball, and I know they're going to want to run it when they come in here. On the defensive side, you've talked about their front a little bit. They're very good up front on defense. They play a lot of guys. Uh, their three technique, number 98, is, is a very disruptive player. Their defensive ends are tall and long. They rush the passer well. Their linebackers run well. And, and I think, you know, the statistics speak to themselves. When you're giving up 1.7 yards a rush over the course of two games, you're doing a good job stopping the run. They've got a good scheme. One of the interesting things about this game that I think is the defensive systems are very similar. I don't know that two are ever identical, but they're very similar. And, and our defensive staff two years ago actually visited with their defensive staff when they were at Vanderbilt. That's how similar they were. So... Uh, it's it, we've done some good on good work this week. I'm sure they have too, because it's almost like looking in the mirror for what you see in practice. Has anything stuck out to you in their defensive backfield? Sure. Yeah. No. They uh, they are not afraid to get after you. They're not afraid to pressure. Uh, they're one of the few teams in the country that still play some zero coverage, mm -hmm. and will match up man to man with you. And when you get those opportunities, you got to protect because if we protect, we know Gary's going to make the throws, and we got a chance to exploit it. With a week like this, with that kind of defensive front, and with what you want to do offensively and the weapons you have in terms of running the football, does the offensive line take a week like this personally? I think they do. I think they do. And I think they, they know what this defense has yielded in the first two games. And they know also what we've done in the first two games. And it's, it's, it's going to be one of, one of the matchups that I think is one of the key matchups in this game to watch is, is are we able to run the ball the way we need to to run our offense? Because I don't make any, any bones about it. You watch us on film. When we run the ball effectively, everything in our offense is available to us. We don't want to be one-dimensional. And I know over time film shows on how the player develops, but a game like this, do you think a player would look at his end and how he can play in the NFL or be a lot of NFL scouts either in practice or during this type of game? Uh, maybe in the back of their mind. I hope that's not in the front of their yeah. mind. I hope, you know, for when, when you're playing in a conference game, I hope all their energy is going towards being 1-0 this week not looking beyond that to anything that might be down the road. And the reality is when you, when you talk to people that are in that league, they'll tell you, if you want to get to that league, the best thing you can do is make sure you perform on a week-in and week-out basis. And, and that comes down to focusing on what's right there in front of you. We'll step aside. We have a few more minutes for you to get your questions in for the coach on Twitter, at our football on the telephone lines at 855-FLOOD-44, 855-356-6344. This is the Kyle Flood Show. We're about living in the moment. You know, that moment when you open a Pepsi and hear the music. 
We're the doers, the shakers, the tastemakers. The ones who dance to their own beat. The ones who stay cool when things heat up. Whether the party is big or small. We're the ones who never want it to end. The ones who can't stop. And never will. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi. Live for now. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Hey, Rutgers fans, not only do the employee owners of STS Tire and Auto Centers make sure your vehicle is running right and provide you with great tire prices, they also want you to win their STS True Fan Rutgers football experience. Visit STSTire.com and enter to win four tickets to the Penn State, Michigan, or Wisconsin games. Spend time on the field and take home a Rutgers jersey and sign football all at STSTire.com. STS, nobody treats you better than an owner. STSTire.com. Oh, what up, Rutgers? Hey, guess what? I bet you didn't know you're about to have three different kinds of barbecue sauce all over that sweet, sticky mug of yours. Also, bet you didn't know, down south in North Carolina, we can actually make some of the best barbecue you've ever had in your ding-dong life. So come on down to Brother Jimmy's Barbecue and put some south in your mouth. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, located at 5 Eastern Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Or check us out at brotherjimmys.com. See y'all real soon. Two minutes left at the Kyle Flood Show here live at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick as Rutgers prepares for Penn State this coming Saturday night at High Point Solution Stadium. We have another question here in person. Young man, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, Coach. My name's Ryan from Morristown, New Jersey. Good to see you, Ryan. How are you, Ryan? Uh, my question is, they had a uh, big party in central Pennsylvania this week. I don't know if you're aware of it, but uh, how nice would it be to rain on that party? I did not know that they had a party there. <laughs> they did. It was, it was pretty large. <laughs> well, here's what I'll tell you. My, my focus and the team's focus is on being one another this week. I think if, if we can achieve that goal, there will be plenty of happiness to go around Piscataway. More Kirk. happiness here than in Happy Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Another question on Twitter. Thank you for your question, Ryan. Good job. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. This question is from Paul Knight. Coach, how are you going to put pressure on Hackenberg? They can't run the entire offense through him. Well, they, they run quite a bit of the offense through him. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. So I think uh, Coach Franklin and his staff will make that decision in terms of how much <laughs> offense they'll run through him. Uh, he's an excellent football player. And when you play against a player like this, you try to minimize his effect on the game. And, and I think I'll go back to what I said before the last break. To me, if you can make them one-dimensional, you know, so it sounds, it sounds maybe a little strange to – to the, to the fans, but if you can minimize their run game and make them one-dimensional, it gives you a better chance to affect what Christian Hackenberg is going to try and do in the pass game. It gives you a better chance to try to get to him with your pass rush because now you get them in more of the must-pass situations uh, to make first down. So you know, that's our goal, but I don't know that that's much different than when we play these offenses on a week-in and week-out basis. And when you play, you know, a coach, you know, I want to talk about a coach-to-coach -coach battle, you know, somebody – of course, a coach you want to win every game, but someone you have a relationship with, do you want to, do you take it any more personal? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, I think James is a professional. I, I feel like I'm a professional, and you know we're going to go out there Saturday night and we're going to compete like crazy. And I, I know he he wants to be one to know as bad as I want to be one to know, and, and that's okay. That that's part of the job. But you know we see each other at Big East Media Day and, and other events like that. You know, James is somebody I've known for a long time, so we we're about the same age. We've come through this profession through some of the, some of the same regions of the country, so you, you overlap in recruiting areas and, and in your circles a little bit. So uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, every week we want to be one to Th know. That's the goal. It doesn't matter to me who the opponent is. Uh, how long have you had a relationship with him? I think uh, I would probably say since the late 90s Okay. Is, is when I met James. I think it was at Hofstra still. I forget exactly where he was at. It was it might have been East Stroudsburg. It, it was before he was at Maryland. That's where he went to school. I know that. Right. It was yeah. before he was at Maryland. I forget if it exactly where he is. But – my relationship with, with James is through really two people, Ron Prince and Raheem Morris. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Those are kind of the connecting pieces of how I've gotten to know James over the years. Now, he was on Coach Freegen's staff, as you mentioned, at Maryland. Can you gain any more insight for a game like this from Coach Freegen? I think you, you might be able to gain a little bit, but I think you gain the most from the film. Yeah. Because every coach, you know, philosophically has to take what they know and what they believe in and adapt it to the players that they have. So, to me, it's much more important to watch what they're doing now, compare it a little bit to what they did at Vandy. But, again, the players are different now. So, different quarterback, different line, different running backs. So, you do see some, you see some similarities. You see some differences. And, ultimately, we have to defend the players and not the coach. And how much of a coach's personality do you see come out on that film in certain situations of a game if someone's more risky or laid back? Does it show a lot in the film? Well, those are things you look for, and, and you try to get a feel for, for every, every coach that you, you work against uh, in terms of, you know, what will be their desire to go for it on fourth down. You know, what will be their desire to fake a, uh, fake a punt or fake a field goal in the, in the special teams. You know, those are all things that we look at and we try to chart each week so to make sure we're putting our players in the best situations. Coach, uh, we have one more question on Twitter. This is from Dan. What are your thoughts about the upcoming year, considering you're in the Big Ten, I guess in terms of the, uh, the schedule that is starting with the Big Ten opener this week? I don't think of it like that. Yeah, I think of it as 12 one-game seasons. And right now we're, we're in the PSU season and, and all of our focus – is there. And when this game is over, we'll evaluate it, we'll make the corrections, and we'll move on, and then we'll get ready for whatever comes next. But right now, I, I, don't, I don't think big picture thinking helps a football team. Big picture thinking is more for TV, radio, the fan bases, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But for us as a football team, it's really about the singularity of focus of trying to be 1-0 each week. So right now, all of our focus is on, is on this week. Well, now the Big Ten schedule starts, and, and certainly you'll go back to some out-of-conference games after this week, but is there anything in particular that you would give the fans to keep an eye out for this coming Saturday night with Penn State? Well, we've talked about some of them as, as we've gone through the last hour. Uh, the, the ability to run the football on both sides. Uh, I think both sides are going to be challenged uh, to run the football, and, and the team that runs the ball more effectively will be able to have the better balance uh, as the game goes on. And then you're going to see special teams is going to have an effect on this football game. There's no doubt. And one of the statistics that I believe in and that I really try to look to influence as the week goes on in our preparation is drive start. Drive start is extremely important in the game. And that takes into account, you know, start, uh, it's, it's really all about starting field position. Uh, special teams take a big, a big part in that. So I think drive start is going to be critical in this football game. Well, the excitement is in the air in Piscataway already, and I imagine you probably cannot wait. We've got a lot, we've got work to do, so we'll take. <laughs> we don't we, we don't wish away the time. Uh, we're we're pleased with the amount of time. The one thing both teams have the same is is the time. So we want to try to use our time better than they use theirs. But I know Saturday night will be here soon enough, and, and when it is, I know the boys will be excited to play. Good luck. Thank you, Good Eric. Coach. Looking forward to Thank it. It should be a oh, lot my. of fun. A lot of fun this coming Saturday night. Live on the Big Ten Network, also on WFAN 660 and 101.9 FM in New York for the Rutgers IMG Sports Network and down in Philadelphia as well on WIP 610 AM and 1450 WCTC. Special thanks to Paul Schrager, Colin Osborne, Tim DeMartin here in attendance tonight as well as Jimmy Gill and as always, terrific job by Jason Baum. Back in our Rutgers IMG Sports Network studios, Thank you to James Cooney. That'll do it for this edition of the Kyle Flood Show live from Brother Jimmy's. We'll see you Saturday night. It is Rutgers and Penn State, the Big Ten opener at High Point Solution Stadium. This has been the Kyle Flood Show. You've been listening to the Kyle Flood Show live from Brother Jimmy's on Easton Avenue in New Brunswick. The Kyle Flood Show has been brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Pepsi, live for now. UPS, to learn how UPS can put the power of logistics to work for you, visit thenewlogistics.com. 